welcome to epg pathasala in today's class we are going to see about calcium calcium is one of the most important mineral in the human metabolism calcium is one important macro mineral which the body requires for maintaining your skeletal system the main function of calcium in the human system is in the formation and reconstruction of your skeletal system the non skeletal calcium that we can see the various process that it does in the body include the blood clotting nerve excitability muscle contraction and in the permeability of the cells and many more physiological functions can be contributed to when we talk about calcium it is very important in which form that we are going to consume the calcium because the form in which it is consumed also plays a very important role in the absorption of calcium i am sure you would be knowing that vitamin d plays a very important role in the absorption of calcium calcium is one macro mineral which requires to be replenished in the body continuously because there is a loss of around 700 mg of calcium per day where the excretion of the calcium takes place through the skin stools urine and bile and researchers have also found that around 40 to 50 percentage of the absorption of calcium is basically dependent upon vitamin d well when there are so many forms of calcium that are available for our consumption and there are various criteria for the absorption of calcium beyond it there is a role of the endocrine system which helps in the metabolism of the calcium in the body so there are three important uh, hormones that which plays a very important role in the absorption of calcium and i am sure you would be knowing that increase or decrease in calcium levels in the body causes a huge amount of stress to the human system excess of calcium in the body causes problems like hypercalcemia and very decreased level of calcium in the body causes hypocalcemia well within this layer we have the role of osteoporosis and osteomalacia which are also the manifestations of the instability of the calcium absorption that takes place in the system at the end of this session you would be able to understand about the distribution and absorbable forms of calcium absorption and homeostatic regulation of calcium physiological functions of calcium deficiency and toxicity of calcium let's start the session with the distribution of calcium calcium is one of the major macro mineral which is indispensable for many of the physiological function the major pools of distribution of calcium include intracellular calcium extracellular and blood calcium and the last one is the bone calcium now let's see first about the intracellular calcium the impounded calcium is found in the mitochondria and endoplasmic reticulum this variation in concentration is due to the influx of calcium ions from the extracellular fluid which would aid in intracellular signaling enzyme activity and muscle contraction extracellular calcium the extracellular calcium is mostly bound to the protein and around 40% of the available calcium is bound to the protein of which 80% is bound to albumin and the remaining to globulin then let's see about the bone calcium majority of the calcium present in the bone is present in the mineralized form that is around 99% and only 1% is used for rapid exchange with the extracellular calcium concentration now that we have seen to the distribution of the calcium now let's see the sources of calcium the sources of calcium are from the plant and the animal sources the best plant sources of calcium include cereals greens and the animal sources include milk and milk products and the marine products so now let us see what are the various absorbable forms of calcium absorption of calcium from the diet or from supplements depends on the form in which it is available 
Calcium carbonate, which is an alkaline based mineral, is obtained from the marine shells. The bioavailability of alkaline calcium is very low as the digestion of the compound to its elemental status requires greater volume of hydrochloric acid in the stomach. Majority of the supplements that are available today are from these sources. The assimilation of the alkaline calcium sources for its utility in cell signaling and its utility in the mineral phase have also been proved to be very low. The next form of calcium is the calcium citrate which has an acidic base and it is better absorbed assimilated than in the carbonate form. The skeletal calcium concentration in both calcium carbonate and citrate forms are low. Further, the marine source of calcium is considered natural and the presence of heavy metal like lead extend a toxogenic effect on the body. The sources of calcium lactate from the food includes your fermented milk products like your curd and yogurt. This form of calcium has better bioavailability as the absorption of elemental calcium as it can be absorbed at various intestinal pH. The common source of calcium phosphate is cow's milk. This is the form of mineral constituent in the bones of the human body system. Maximum bioavailability through assimilation in the human intestine takes place in this form. The other synthetic forms include calcium citrate malate where maximum bioavailability is there and it is also water soluble and then the next form is the calcium orotate. Well with these being the various absorbable forms of calcium now let us see about what is the requirement of a calcium for various age groups. The requirement of calcium for the various age groups can be derived through major approaches including calcium balance studies, factorial model using mineral accretion data and clinical trials. Upon these approaches where the bone mineral accretion is specific to calcium accretion can be obtained through scanning or using of isotope studies. In addition, the responses that happen to change in calcium balance due to varied calcium intakes can be studied through clinical trials. Auxiliary with the use of bone densitometer, the estimation of desirable calcium levels can help in addressing the requirement of calcium. The adult requirement of calcium is derived based on the calcium depletion as indicated through the above mentioned methods. The earlier depletion of calcium levels in women owing to repeated pregnancy, lactation and menopause need separate requirement derivation which is noted through frequent fractures in individual. So with this as the base for the calculation of calcium we can find that the recommendations include around 600 mg per dl if for an adult, 1200 mg per dl during pregnancy and lactation and 800 mg per dl for postmenopausal women. When we look into the scenario of the infants and children, the requirement is around 500 mg per dl for infants and 600 mg per dl for children between the age group of 1 to 9 years and 800 mg per dl for children in the age group of 10 to 16 years. Well, now we have seen the recommended intake of calcium and how it is been derived. Now let us see about how the absorption of calcium takes place in the human system. The main source of calcium in the diet would include your milk and milk product. Calcium in the vegetables are usually bound to most of the phytates and oxalate. The calcium rich foods on its advent in the stomach are converted to its salt by the action of hydrochloric acid. Through the vitamin D dependent pathway and also through the non vitamin D dependent pathway absorption of calcium occurs through the brush borders of the small intestine. 
The vitamin D dependent pathway usually occurs when the intake of calcium is low and the non vitamin D dependent pathway usually occurs when the intake of calcium is high. The absorption of calcium is basically dependent on the sufficiency of vitamin D, presence of calcium binders including oxalate, phosphates and phytates and above all the physiological status and the age of the individual. The active cellular absorption takes place in the duodenum and the process of absorption involves two important steps. The first step is the movement of the calcium into the enterocyte for the transport across the cell and the second step is the release of calcium to the extracellular fluid and the bed. Entry of calcium into the intestinal epithelial cell is basically facilitated through the transient receptor potential that is the TPR channel which is voltage insensitive. Further calcium is pumped into the cell through calcium ATPase. The rate limiting step in the absorption of the transcellular calcium across the epithelial cell is highly influenced by the carrier protein calbinder. The synthesis of calbinder is totally dependent on vitamin D. The non-vitamin D dependent paracellular pathway allows the absorption of calcium in the jejunum and the ileum. The absorption of calcium occurs through the diffusion of the ionized calcium across the basolateral spaces around the enterocyte through the tight junctions and then it enters into the circulation. Now we will see what happens to the absorbed calcium through the metabolism and the regulation. In the small intestine, the expression of calcium binding protein of the epithelial cell regulates the absorption of dietary calcium from the small intestine. The stimulation and suppression of calcium and phosphate uptake directly influence the bone mineralization process. Further, the kidney is the crucial organ in calcium homeostasis. In conditions of low calcium status, all the calcium in the circulation to the glomerular filtrate is reabsorbed and calcium status is maintained. Hormonal control over here. As I told you in the introduction, there are three hormones that play a significant role in the maintaining of the blood calcium and phosphorus concentration. They include parathyroid hormone, the vitamin D, and the calcitonin. Parathyroid hormone which is secreted by the parathyroid gland is a polypeptide with 84 amino acid residues with a molecular weight of 9500 daltons. It operates in tissue via the C-AMP secondary messenger. It plays a significant role in increase of calcium concentration. The major role includes stimulation of higher production of vitamin D which is biologically active within the kidney. It provides a mechanism through which control of extracellular calcium and phosphate mechanisms are regulated in the intestinal absorption, renal excretion and exchange between extracellular regions and bones. A peptide hormone secreted by the gland is the calcitonin which tends to reduce the calcium concentration. It functions in converse to the parathyroid hormone. Now let's see about the parathyroid hormone. The extracellular calcium levels are sensed through a class CG protein coupled receptors namely calcium sensing receptors. As this G protein coupled receptors move across the cell membrane seven times. They are known as seven transmembrane domain receptors. The two main pathway that these G protein coupled receptors cause signal transduction are the C-AMP signal pathway and the phosphatidyl inositol signal pathway. The calcium homeostasis is regulated by the parathyroid gland through the calcium sensing receptors which modulate the release of parathyroid hormone. The variation in the plasma calcium concentration stimulates or suppresses the parathyroid hormone. 
when the plasma concentration of calcium is increased, there is a suppression of the release of the parathyroid hormone. The increased concentration of calcium binding to extracellular region and modulation in the conformation of the receptors aid in the intracellular region to initiate the phospholipase C pathway, which in turn increases the intracellular concentration of calcium. This increases in intracellular concentration of calcium, causing exocytosis of parathyroid hormone and inhibits the vesicle fusion. Now we will see about how the activation of vitamin D takes place. Cholecalciferol, which is vitamin D in the active form, is formed in the skin, which is converted in the liver to the dihydroxycholecalciferol through a feedback mechanism. This 25-dihydroxycholecalciferol is acted upon by the activated parathyroid hormone and converted to 1,25-dihydroxycholecalciferol in the kidney. In the intestinal epithelial region, with the action of calcium binding protein, calcium ATPase and alkaline phosphatase, the intestinal absorption of calcium occur. The feedback mechanism in the plasma concentration of calcium ions inhibit the parathyroid hormone in converting 25-dihydroxycholecalciferol to 125-dihydroxycholecalciferol in the kidney. The effect of active form of vitamin D include promotion of intestinal absorption of calcium, aid in the synthesis of calcium binding protein and its facilitated transport, support calcium reabsorption in the kidney and calcium absorption in the bone. During calcium depreciation, the secretion of parathyroid hormone is stimulated which in turn increases the production of active vitamin D. In this process, it is noted that the calcitonin secretion is low due to the feedback mechanism. This increase in the vitamin D production aids the intestinal epithelial cell to uptake intestinal absorption of calcium. This in turn leads to the depletion of calcium and phosphates from the bone through the direct stimulation of parathyroid hormone and vitamin D. Further, the kidneys play a very crucial role by decreasing the excretion of calcium ions through enhanced tubular reabsorption which is also stimulated by the parathyroid hormone and vitamin D. The calcium deprivation status also activates the calcium sensors in the loop of Helen, which directly facilitates calcium reabsorption. During calcium loading, secretion of parathyroid hormone is inhibited, which directly suppresses the production of active vitamin D. This suppression stimulates the secretion of calcitonin, which is due to the increased blood concentration of calcium ions. Therefore, there is a suppression on the uptake of calcium ions through intestinal epithelial cells leading to increased renal excretion of calcium salts. Calmodulin, the protein which binds calcium directly or to the protein on the surface of the cell in response to the enzyme activity of protein kinases is a very important step in modulating the activity of key enzymes in binding. Calcium serves as a reservoir in the extracellular fluid. The sources of calcium is from the gut absorption and from bone resorption. Calcium is used for bone formation through its entry via the gastrointestinal tract, kidney and the skin. Further to meet the requirement of calcium, calcium fluxes occur across the cell membrane. This ionized calcium in the extracellular fluid is very important constituent of many neuromuscular and cellular functions. Further to mediate the hormonal control to affect the target hormones, the role of intracellular signaling pathway including cyclic adenosine monophosphate system and phosphoinositide system are very important. The feedback mechanism of parathyroid gland through the calcium receptors control the ionized calcium in the extracellular fluid. So this is what is all about the activation of the vitamin D, the role of the parathyroid gland and above all the hormonal control in the metabolism and regulation of calcium. Now we will see the various physiological functions of calcium and of which the first and most important function is the clotting process and calcium.
Calcium plays a very important role in the coagulation process. Calcium ions along with vitamin K and a protein fibrinogen helps in the clotting cascade. The next function is the role of calcium in muscle contraction. Calcium triggers muscle contraction by reacting with regulatory proteins through interaction of myosin and actin. The myosin linked regulation is completely active with the calcium interaction. In the absence of calcium in the myosin linked regulation, myosin are blocked for the interaction with actin which is the major action of the actin complex formation with myosin for muscle contraction. The next function is nerve signaling. The voltage gated channels are the major source of calcium influx and plays a vital role in calcium signaling in the cell. The neurological system expresses a number of these voltage gated calcium channels which are exclusive for both cellular and subcellular distribution which also contributes to specific physiological functions. Calcium acts as an intermediate in response of cells to stimuli. Calcium acts as an intermediate in the reaction of the cells which is equivalent to the regulatory actions of cyclic nucleotides. Intracellular receptor proteins, the calmodulin, which is found in the cells that contain nucleus, binds calcium ion when their concentration in the reaction to the stimulus increases. When calcium binds to calmodulin, its activity is noted in many enzymes, notably the ones which participate in the metabolism of protein phosphorylation, cyclic nucleotide, muscle contraction, glycogen metabolism, formation of microtubules, secretory functions and calcium flux. Calcium also plays a very important role in many metalloenzymes. The role of calcium in bone formation is through the mineralization of calcium where calcium hydroxyapatite, the main mineral component concentration depends on age of the individual as the major factor. So this constituent plays a vital role in the formation of bone along with osteocalcin, GLA protein and other organic matrix. The relative input of the organic matrix along with the calcium hydroxy appetite would be significant in structural and functional constituents of the skeleton providing regeneration properties. Absorption of calcium from the intestine in bone formulation is stimulated by calcitriol. The next function is remodeling of bone. In adults, the skeletal systems are remodeled over a period of 10 years. Both the cortical and the tabicular bone forms the axial and the appendicular skeletons. The cortical bone, which is the hard outer bone, is remodeled less frequently. The trabecular bone, which is remodeled regularly, depend on the non-tissue bone, which is revered for its action mainly through osteoclasts and the formation through osteoblasts. Continuous supply of calcium from the reserves help in the remodeling of the bone. Physical activity is a very important constituent of skeletal hemostatus. Researchers have proved that the osteocytes in the cortical bone initiate the remodeling of the bone when gravitational or physical activity is sensed. In case of low physical activity or space travel where there is weightlessness, there would be intense remodeling with suppression of bone formation. This condition can lead to rapid bone loss. So with this as the base for the calculation of calcium, we can find that the recommendations include around 600 mg per DL if for an adult, 1200 mg per DL during pregnancy and lactation and 800 mg per DL for postmenopausal women. When we look into the scenario of the infants and children, the requirement is around 500 mg per DL for infants and 600 mg per DL for children between the age group of 1 to 9 years and 800 mg per DL for children in the age group of 10 to 16 years. Well, now we have seen the recommended intake of calcium and how it has been derived.
when the food consumed have high level of phosphorus and low calcium there arises an acidic state in the body which causes inflammation further a decreased phosphorus level also point towards malignancy in instances of deposit formation in arthritis and acute attacks ratio of calcium to phosphorus is altered the net balance not only depends on the absorption of mineral from the gut or their retention or excretion by the kidney but also on the bone stern over let us see about what are the factors that affect the calcium absorption so in this i will first deal with the factors which increases the absorption the first factors which can help in the absorption of calcium include your parathyroid hormone it helps by increasing the absorption of calcium across the intestinal mucosa the second one being vitamin d the synthesis of calbindin which is the carrier protein for calcium is induced in the intestinal epithelial cell which helps in the absorption of calcium third factor is lactose lactose helps in the absorption of calcium particularly in infants when lactose is affected on by the microflora as it's a produced which decreases the ph favoring the solubilization of calcium for absorption so in connection with this the next factor is the acidity maintaining an acidic medium helps in the solubilization of calcium which enhances absorption the next factor is amino acid amino acids like the lysine and arginine increases the absorption of calcium and the last factor being calcium depletion The efficacy of calcium absorption is increased based on the body demands. In conditions like pregnancy and lactation, the absorption efficacy is increased by 50%. Well, now let us see what are the factors which decrease the absorption of calcium. The first factor is phytic acid. As I've already told during the sources of calcium all the vegetable sources are usually linked with the phytates phytates act as ligands in the absorption of calcium hexaphosphate of inositol is the phytate source in vegetables fermentation and cooking helps to decrease the phytate concentration the next one is oxalic acid Calcium oxalates are the insoluble complex of calcium present in the vegetables. This form of calcium has minimum absorption capacity in the body. The third factor is malabsorption. During conditions like steatorrhea where fatty acids are absorbed, it forms insoluble complexes with calcium making it unavailable for absorption. Then the role of lactatives As lactatives decrease the transit time for the passage of food through the intestinal tract absorption of calcium is also hindered the last one is the role of phosphate in conditions of increased phosphates in circulation precipitation of calcium occurs now we will see about the deficiency of calcium hypocalcemia presence of low serum calcium is termed as hypocalcemia chronic kidney diseases hypoparathyroidism and vitamin d deficiency are the widespread causes of hypocalcemia chronic mild and moderate hypocalcemia is asymptomatic whereas in acute hypocalcemia neuromuscular irritability is a prominent symptom in severe hypocalcemia tetany is absorbed hypercalcemia Elevated calcium levels in the blood is termed as hypercalcemia. Increased intestinal calcium absorption, excessive skeletal calcium release or decreased renal calcium excretion could be the cause of hypercalcemia. Other than consuming high diet, any adrenal or parathyroid gland disorder or kidney disease can also result in hypercalcemia. Well, to sum up today's class on calcium we have seen about the various distribution of calcium in the body the various forms of calcium 
that we intake from the diet like the calcium carbonate, the calcium oxalate and the type of calcium which actually has the maximum absorption in the human system. And above all, we have also seen the various types of absorption that takes place in the body and the role of vitamin D, how it enhances the absorption of calcium. Well, whatever calcium is being absorbed in the body is being used for both the skeletal and the non-skeletal purpose in the body. And here we find that the whole of the skeletal system is basically dependent on the calcium that is provided through the diet because the skeletal system formation as well as the reconstruction of the skeletal system or the remodeling of the skeletal system is basically dependent on the calcium levels that we intake. So therefore maintaining or consuming a good calcium products which also has a better absorption plays a very important role in maintaining the skeletal calcium levels. But that's not it. If you have to have a better a blood coagulation that takes place, you have to have a nerve excitability, muscle contraction. We definitely require to have your serum calcium levels in normal. So for that consumption of good sources of calcium like from your milk sources, from your marine sources and also from the greens is a very important must for your intake of calcium. Well, with that we can see that the absorption of calcium would be in the best if the consumption of calcium is on a regular basis. And we have also seen in today's chapter what happens to the toxicity or what happens in the excess or the deficiency of calcium leading to various disorders. It, the actual disorders of calcium not just stops with the skeletal system but also for the normal functioning, the physiological functioning of the body you require this kind of calcium which is termed as the serum calcium which is basically derived from the food sources. So I hope this chapter of calcium was very useful and therefore you can also go on to the learning material if you have further doubts to clarify.